Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I have no need to even add to what the distinguished Lord of the Attorney General just said so, except to, to note that I, I journeyed with him uh, to the High Court. I, I felt regal uh, as, my, as his fellow counsel, right? And I uh, also with our, our QC, our QC, the member from number eight, Mr. Speaker. But a noted QC remarked to me, uh, not this one, sir, uh, in a few words, he said, that's just the first step. So for the ordinary man in George Street and Newcastle and Tabernacle and Keon and so, yes. I liken this to a boxing match, you know? Some boxing matches have 12 rounds. Some have 10. This one has three rounds, Mr. Speaker. That's what the AG referred to as the appellate process, Mr. Speaker. But that being said, Mr. Speaker, I wish to state on this item on the other paper that on July, on, on, on February, beg your pardon, sir, the 22nd, 2015, as Intimated earlier by our distinguished leader and prime minister as part of our celebrations. But on July, on, how shall I say, so on February the 22nd, 2015, I, Ian Patches Lybert, took the oaths of office in front of a large crowd, Mr. Speaker, in front of thousands of people who had gathered at Warner Park to witness the change of a political guard. Yes. Before that, Mr. Speaker, some of us marched in the streets yes. of Bastia for the change. Some voted for the change. Yes. Mr. Speaker, some prayed for the change. And someone said to me the other day, a big businessman, he doesn't change change. So today, Mr. Speaker, we continue to thank Almighty God for blessing us with that change. And the Lord is on our side, Mr. Speaker. And as the gospel song would state, if I was allowed to sing, I would sing it, Mr. Speaker, when he says things are getting better in St. Right. Kitts and Nevis. Mr. Speaker, Friday coming, the 22nd of February 2019, God's spell, will make four years since my appointment as Minister of Public Infrastructure Post, Urban Development and Transport. And as an administration, it cannot be disputed that we have done a lot. We have done a whole lot, Mr. Speaker. And I stand here without fear of contradiction, Mr. Speaker, because never before Never before, Mr. Speaker, in this country has any administration delivered so much on behalf of the people in so short a space of time. Never before had that happened, Mr. Speaker. Team Unity is in office for four years, just going on the four years, Mr. Speaker. Not four terms, just four years. And Friday coming, as I said, 
will make four years and not four terms. So I'm asking the people not to be fooled by those armchair critics who are supposed to know or pretend to know a lot about governance and government and the like. Mr. Speaker, I listened to one of these armchair um, critics on the radio just last night. And he went to page 43 or page 44 in our manifesto to make the point that team unity promised freedom of information or something like that. And we, to use his words, we ain't give the people. We haven't given people freedom of information, Mr. Speaker. But I ask the question, why did this armchair critic skip past pages 16 and 17 in our manifesto, Mr. Speaker? And on page 16 and 17, Mr. Speaker, our manifesto speaks to lands. And I quote, Mr. Speaker, with your permission, the current Douglas Labor Administration has committed countless insults and injuries against the people of St. Kitts and Nevis during its time in office. It continues, Mr. Speaker, none of them was worse than the travesty of Labour's parliamentary decision in December 2012 to steal our hard-earned lands from the people of this country. It went down, Mr. Speaker. The surrender of over 1,200 acres of prime land in Sandy Point, Keon, Lambert, and Lodge Estates means that such lands will be out of the reach from the common man who dreams on building houses, developing agriculture, and other development projects, Mr. Speaker. And what have we done? We said in the manifesto on page 17, Mr. Speaker, we will reclaim La Valley Greens for, su for suburban housing and other people-centered development. And Mr. Speaker, all of us will recall, I'm sure, and, I'm, and I am sure you do, that in the budget address, we made provisions in our budget estimates to not only reclaim La Valley, we have reclaimed lands in Keon, in Lodge, Mr. Speaker, and have the intention to also reclaim those lands in Lamberts. So we have put our money where our mouth is, Mr. Speaker. Well, we ask the question, Mr. Speaker, why do they continue to skip pages 24, for example, Mr. Speaker? And on page 24, it says, Mr. Speaker, it says, Mr. Speaker, that the team unity government will commit to settle with former sugar workers the full $60 million that is still due to them. We have done that, Mr. Speaker. Don't mind them coming here and try to say it's $16 million US where the money gone. The fact is, an old man worked in the industry for 55 years. Mr. Hercules, may he rest in peace. And for 55 years, he got $1,500, and we said no. We're going to repair the damage dealt by the Labor Administration, and we paid $16 million to thousands of workers, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you'll ask the armchair critics, why are they skipping page 25 in the, in the manifesto? And on page 25, Mr. Speaker, under the caption of education, it reads, Mr. Speaker, that a team unity government 
will build a brand new and modern Bastion High School. We have started the process, Mr. Speaker. We have started that process, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, you ask the question, why? Why are these armchair critics and those in the opposition skipping page 31, Mr. Speaker? And on page 31, it's, it states, Mr. Speaker, that a team unity government will increase personal incomes by issuing a $500 family support grant for households. You saw the thousands of households or representative households in Independence Square. And instead of commending the government, they criticize the government about slave markets and all sorts of things. But people have, we have dealt with that before, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, why he skip page 41 in our manifesto? And on page 41, Mr. Speaker, it says, and I quote, a team unity government commits to constructing an East Bus Terminal in Bastille. Mr. Speaker, we did that. We did that, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, it goes on, on page 41, and it speaks to all road Bay. Mr. Speaker, just a few weeks ago, we signed a contract, a $31 million contract, to fix all road Bay once and for all, Mr. Speaker. So the point I'm making, Mr. Speaker, is that things that we are doing, and some things I would add, are not in the manifesto, Mr. Speaker. But we had to do them, because we inherited a country from the Douglas Labour Party of some 20 years. We inherited a country with rundown infrastructure, rundown and dilapidated infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I said earlier, Friday coming will make four years, God spare, since my appointment as Minister of Public Infrastructure post urban development and transport. And I wish to thank the Honorable and Distinguished Prime Minister for this opportunity to serve in this capacity. I also wish to thank each and every one of my colleagues in Cabinet for their continuing support in the process. On accepting the mantle, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to make a difference, Mr. Speaker. And the first thing I did was to examine travel between St. Kitts and Nevis. Thousands of people ply or, or travel on these ferries that ply between St. Kitts and Nevis on a daily basis. I don't know if you have your own helicopter, Mr. Speaker. If not, chances are you, this afternoon, will use one of those ferries, the Mark Twain, the Carib Queen, or Carib Surf, or, or Apple Cider. I don't know your taste, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, waiting for the ferry meant under the, the Douglas Labour Party, mingling on some, in some waiting area with Bowley, you know, mingling with no disrespect, so, but it's fact, mingling with these vagrants. And we said no. We have to improve the travel experience of those 
traveling between Sekis and Nevis, and we constructed a brand new ferry terminal, air condition, all other amenities, bathroom facilities, Mr. Speaker. Internet, access to Wi-Fi, Mr. Speaker. And that's what we did when we got into office. We decided, Mr. Speaker, and I advocated strongly and got the support of my colleagues in cabinet, that we must brighten the light of progress and modernity in the city of Bastia. And what we did, we introduced traffic lights, Mr. Speaker. And you should have heard them, I'm sure you could still hear them back then, with all sorts of criticism. You got accident, car gun boot up. You know, you can't go on some roundabout with lights. And all kinds of things you hear, Mr. Speaker. And when the people came out and the Prime Minister flicked the switch for those traffic lights, it ended the congestion in Basitio. It increased or it enhanced the, the, the traffic safety and efficiency and the traffic management generally. And Mr. Speaker, my leader and the Minister of Finance is not here. I'm sure he's listening or he'll reflect on the tape. But we do have a phase two for the traffic management system. The, the traffic flow or the traffic study has already been done, Mr. Speaker. And we intend, hopefully, to, 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 to introduce the other set of traffic lights to further improve the traffic management system in Bassettia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I needed, as the Minister of Public Infrastructure, to make certain that our economy was developed and to ensure as well that as Minister of Public Infrastructure, our roads, Mr. Speaker, which I'm sure everyone will agree, they make a crucial contribution to economic growth and development and create important social benefits to our people. In that regard, Mr. Speaker, we embarked upon an island main road resurfacing project. Phase one has been completed, Mr. Speaker. And you, you drive, those who drive are going to, 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 to Sandy Point from Barcity. The five mile stretch of roads there, you see the markings, the cat eyes, you know, the, 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 the uh, reflectors as they call them, properly, Mr. Speaker, makes the road look so international. And apart from that, it has eliminated, as the one Calypsonian sang, the pothole dodging. But on the eastern side as well, Mr. Speaker, from Connery down into Keys, I see my sister smiling. She drives on an international stretch of road. Similar markings, Mr. Speaker. The, the guardrails, the reflectors. But we ain't seen nothing yet. Because I say, things are getting better. And just yesterday, Mr. Speaker, and or rather before that, I must say, right, we mandated that there must be local input in this development. And for the phase one uh, of this project, there were some five local employers, of contractors employed rather, Mr. Speaker. Five of them. Over 100 workers gained employment. Along with over 27 truckers as well, local truckers, benefited Mr. Speaker. But just yesterday, Mr. Speaker, just yesterday, I received the tender evaluation report for phase two. For phase two of the project, Mr. Speaker. 
And we will model phase two just as we did for phase one, Mr. Speaker. And in phase two, Mr. Speaker, we intend to subcontract 16, 16 local contractors from all around the country. Remember, phase two goes from Kion right around to connect there in Challengers. And we have already decided to contract 16 local contractors from Stonefoot and Vorchilds and New Guinea, from Middle Island, Lambert's Godwin Guts and Conyers, from Coco Guts, Sandy Point, Newton Gong, St. Paul's, Deep Bay, Sadler's Village, Mr. Speaker, Bellevue, Tabernacle Village, Mansion and Molyneux, Mr. Speaker, from Lodge, Atlas Village, and of course from Keon and Wellington Road. Documents have already been dispatched to some 56 contractors, 56 local contractors, out of which some 16 will be selected, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, we cannot forget that very important artery in the road network system in the area of Old Road Bay. And that is an area that is near and dear to me. Although, yes, I'm from St. Christopher 1, and that's in St. Christopher 4, Mr. Speaker. But a young man died. A young man died from Rockfall one Sunday afternoon, Mr. Speaker, going across Old Road Bay. And I promised his brother, Dennis, that I will champion the cause to fix that road once and for all. And I'm happy that I've started, Mr. Speaker. Dennis has said he has the rock that killed his brother. And he has to be placed somewhere along that stretch of road. I haven't seen the rock, but I am sure we can accommodate that request, Mr. Speaker. $31 million, Mr. Speaker. $31 million to build resilience across all road bay once and for all, Mr. Speaker. And another local contractor employed. We're keeping things local, Mr. Speaker. The average employer, the average contractor, the contractors, period, who are in St. Kitts must benefit from our projects, Mr. Speaker. I can talk about the airport runway. I can advise the nation that the resurfacing of the Robert L. Llewellyn Bradshaw Airport Runway is now complete, Mr. Speaker. Now complete. The markings, international markings are now being, 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 being done, Mr. Speaker. Next week, we will start to install brand new runway lighting at the RL Bradshaw Airport in St. Kitts, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, that's what I, what I spoke about. We inherited the lapidated, the lapidated rundown infrastructure from these people, Mr. Speaker. And these are not in the manifesto. These are outside the manifesto. But when we got into office and we saw what was there, we couldn't turn a blind eye. We couldn't turn a blind eye, Mr. Speaker. A taxiway, the main taxiway, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, taxiway Alpha at the Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw Airport, Mr. Speaker. I was traveling on an American airline jet a few weeks ago. And I heard the pilot make mention, Mr. Speaker, and perhaps he has come here for the first time. And he said, it's rather unusual for any aircraft to taxi down the runway. That's what's happened. We taxi down the runway and turn on the runway. Because for seven years, Mr. Speaker, the Douglas Labour Party never saw it fit to put money in infrastructure, infrastructure development and maintenance. Although they come in here with a song and dance, but they left so much money in the treasury. 
but they 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 they, 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 they looked at the the the, the 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 books. They looked at the books, and provided in those books that there is profitability. But profitability at the expense of not maintaining your infrastructure is foolhardy, Mr. Speaker. And that's why we have to do all these things around this time, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in coming to the end, I cannot close as well without speaking about our new cruise pier that's under construction, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this new cruise pier will accommodate the Oasis class vessels and the existing pier, I must add, accommodated one of such vessels, the, the Symphony of the Seas, the largest cruise vessel afloat today. And I made mention, and it bears repeating, Mr. Speaker, that we, as a federation, as a country, as a nation of St. Kitts and Nevis, the smallest independent nation in the Western Hemisphere, I said the world, Mr. Speaker, the smallest independent nation accommodated alongside the boats, the largest cruise ship vessel afloat today. And you think that's all, Mr. Speaker? When we complete the second cruise pier, we will be the only nation in the world, the only nation in the world, Mr. Speaker, that can accommodate three, three Oasis class vessels simultaneously. That is no mean feat, Mr. Speaker. And when that happens, I trust we'll all of the cabinet be there to take a picture along that spectacle, alongside that spectacle, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, that's not all, you know. I want to make the point as well that one of the mandates of this cabinet for this project was or is, still is, Mr. Speaker, that as far as possible, we must procure material and labor locally. And I can report to this honorable house and to the nation that we have done that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, to date, we have, or rather the contractor, and that contractor is a local contractor, Kelly Construction, owned, I think, by Seamus Kelly. They are doing all the precast slabs and beams. And to date, as I speak, Mr. as I deliver here, Mr. Speaker, they have already procured 2,000 cubic yards of concrete thus far. And this concrete is being supplied by TDC, Mr. Speaker. The project, I'm advised, is expected to consume some 9,000 cubic yards of concrete, all of which, Mr. Speaker, will be supplied by Senkit's Masonry products. Mr. Speaker, to date, that contractor has procured some 200 tons of steel that is being utilized in the project, Mr. Speaker. And all that steel has been supplied to date by TDC. Mr. Speaker, I am advised that 1,000 tons of steel would be used in the project. Welcome, uh, Deputy. Thank you, sir. I represented you well, sir. <laughs> I didn't have a passport for you, though. <laughs> uh, 1,000 tons of steel, Mr. Speaker, would be used in the project. Already 90% of that steel 
is on the, on, on the site, Mr. Speaker. And TDC has supplied 55% of that commodity. And I ask myself, you know, because as I see the deputy here now, now he used to work with TDC, and there's a, a saying, TDC, your company, right? But I, I was in Hasford, and I always heard, try Hasford first. <laughs> you know, but, but TDC got it, Mr. Speaker. But Hasford had to take, take, uh, took part as well in it, Mr. Speaker. And I hope my, my good friend Flames, uh, is it Flames from, uh, from, uh, from Builders? Uh, uh, oh, what's his name? Henry. Yeah, yeah. He got the name, yeah, Hendrix, yes, but... Oh, Lord. <laughs> love Train, Love Train. I trust my good friend, Love Train at Builders Paradise is taking part. But all the local companies are participating, Mr. Speaker. Still. Concrete. And don't lose sight of the fact, Mr. Speaker, that all the material is being quarried locally. Be mined at all road bay. There will be need for either 20 or 30 20 ton armor rocks that will come from the, 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 the public works quarry. We're not going to import it from the place. As a matter of fact, as a minister with responsibility for the quarry, I am advocating that they, they, they bring the quarry up to a state of efficiency and effectiveness, that we will start to export material from the quarry rather than importing, Mr. Speaker. Right. That is the challenge I gave to the Public Works Department. Mr. Speaker, in terms of, uh, of uh, employment, Mr. Speaker, approximately 100 employees are already on that, that, that work site, Mr. Speaker. All welders used on the site are local welders procured by the, the main contractor, American Bridge, Mr. Speaker. All timber, fuel, and other consumables are locally sourced. Timber again from TDC, and fuel from Seoul, Mr. Speaker. And the peer lighting, I'm advised, will be procured and installed locally by Kelly's construction. And Mr. Speaker, approximately 400,000 to 500,000 dollars has been spent monthly on procurement of supplies locally. So Mr. Speaker, it's a trickle down effect within the economy, Mr. Speaker. And we're not just only developing the country but we are developing the ordinary local man in the country. Because if you facilitate that trickle-down effect, that cascading effect, it cascades to the grassroots economy, Mr. Speaker. The local shops, mom and pop shops, which I want to see back in East Bastille, they will benefit. The ordinary taxi drivers will benefit eventually. And other workers will benefit, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I want to make the point though, in closing, Mr. Speaker, that I always learned that all politics are local. And I reflect, Mr. Speaker, before I got into office, uh, people going to and from Bird Rock had to walk or jog in the street, you know? And I would always tell one to jog against the oncoming traffic because you have to skip out the road if you have a, you know, a reckless driver or reckless drivers. And Mr. Speaker, I can set this honorable house that since Team Unity got into office, we have eliminated that danger and we have constructed a sidewalk coming down Bird Rock Road, Mr. Speaker. We have done that, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, we have in the residential areas, we just constructed roads in Sandy Point. Don't remember the, some of the names. Huh? Yes, for the records. Romney's Ground, yes. Cat Path, yes. Yes. And the Pound Yard in Downing Street. In Sandy Point. All well done. All done. And as the representative said, Mr. Speaker, all well done. Thank you. We went to Kayan, Mr. Speaker. I need some more. You need some more? Yes, sir. I, I support you with that. Just support me in that request. <laughs> in Kayan, Mr. Speaker. We went up Cabbage Tree. We went up to Cabbage Tree. Down in where well, Tableton is to come. Support me when I made the request as well, too. Down in number four, we're looking at, at Virtual's Virtual Heights, I think it is. Right? That road is still, I was surprised that's not completed, Mr. Speaker. It looks completed. It looks completed? Yes, they reach down to the road. Okay, you said they reach down to the road. You're better than me. But you're the leader, so. You must, you must. Okay, sir. So understand that's almost completed, Mr. Speaker. And all those other roads that 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 people are really, I don't, are really are contacting me about. Let's, let's say be, be correct, Mr. Speaker. They will be addressed, uh, Mr. Speaker. For some roads that we have to grade each time, we have decided because of the 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 cost prohibition, because of the, the cost uh, uh, involved, Mr. Speaker, we, we, may, we will very well use some of the mill material, Mr. Speaker, from the airport runway, for example, and, and, uh, and, and, and pave the roads, pave the roads uh, uh, for, for a while. That will last, I understand, uh, three or four years. Is the road up there in the Shadowell area, is it Shadowell, that we have divorce. Jewels will have to be addressed as well, Mr. Speaker. So all over. Because we met Mr. Speaker. And I must repeat it. Over 70 areas where the, 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 the Douglas Labour Party said, said, or apparently allocated lands and people couldn't get to the land. Housing or residential halls were built by NHC and there was no access. In, or there was only dirt road access. In Taylor's, Mr. Speaker, in Taylor's village, the, 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 the folks in Taylor's village got rid of the, the, the sugar factory ash. But up came another nuisance. Dirt, dust. You put out your clothes on the wire, you come back in the afternoon, and the clothes brown in all kinds of colors. And as the representative I said, Mr. Speaker, that will have to be addressed once and for all. And as I speak here this afternoon, Mr. Speaker, every single dirt road in Taylor's have been resurfaced, have been paved. That's what Team Unity is all about. That's what Team Unity is all about, Mr. Speaker. The Taylor's Village Park has been addressed thanks to the cooperation of the Minister of Education and Deputy. Right? We graded that park. No matter what is said about students can this and students can that, the rain fell or the rain continues falling. And if you go there, Mr. Speaker, the, the field is level, it is green. I have to find some money, Mr. Minister put in some bleachers there. Is that in your budget? No, sir. No, sir. But that's Taylor's, Mr. Speaker. But you'll find the money. <laughs> the drainage around, how could we forget, Mr. Speaker, that under the past administration, when a little drop of rain fell, he used to drive go to Frigate Bay. Oh, yes. You couldn't pass on Pond Road. A little, a little drop of rain passed. You needed a, a, a boat, or you needed to know how to swim. But people pass that road now and don't even recognize that the drainage has been addressed. On Pond Road, 
and on George Street, Mr. Speaker. We did that, Mr. Speaker. I did that, and I thank my colleagues in cabinet for the support uh, in doing that, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to end here because time is drawing nigh, and I believe my colleagues want to, to, to go home yes. and, and bask. Uh, good to see my colleague. Uh, Who's <laughs> can't say that on, 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 the, on the mic? <laughs> you <know? laughs> I can't say that on the mic, Mr. Speaker. That's between. We said that in camera, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I can say that we're doing things. Don't forget, Mr. Speaker, as well. Not this coming Sunday. The following Sunday, we will officially turn on the lights at the paddock on Ponce Pasture, where the softball is played and the young boys play the small goal, and we'll have a party there next week Sunday. We all are invited. There'll be two games. One, the, 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 uh, the small goalers or the small goal players versus the, the, uh, the softball players. That's one match. And the other match, the, the softball players will play football against the the young footballers, that's the second match, and then we'll have a party over there in the pasture. You all are invited. Sunday? Sunday? I'll kick off the, yes, that's Sunday coming, the following Sunday, yes. Yes, the third of March, this coming Sunday, remember this, this, we have this gospel concert, we can't conflict. You ask which game I play in, I can't play both, but I'll just kick the ball off and bowl the first ball. That's my role, Mr. Speaker. So Mr. Speaker, in closing though, Mr. Speaker, I want to, to thank the people of St. Christopher No. 1, the people of East Bastia. Because, Mr. Speaker, the people of East Bastia had a choice. They had a choice between a representative who was there for some 22 years. Some people referred to him as the sleepy minister. And they made that choice, Mr. Speaker, and reposed their confidence in me. And I want to, to forewarn them, the people of East Bastia, that having been replaced, the, having replaced rather, Mr. Speaker, uh, that representative of some 22 years, I want you to, to, to to crave the, 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 the understanding and the attention of every single uh, voter in East Bastille, in St. Christopher, St. Christopher One, that someone has come with that replacement. And that someone, Mr. Speaker, that someone learned for 20 years at the feet of the representative I replace. So what can that someone bring, Mr. Speaker? But that's the most I will say, Mr. Speaker, in respect of that issue. I won't talk about step, but the Prime Minister spoke about step, Mr. Speaker. I won't talk about pep, Mr. Speaker, because the Prime Minister spoke about pep. But I want to say, Mr. Speaker, again, I want to thank the people of St. Christopher One for continuing to repose their confidence in me. I want to, by extension, thank the people of the country for continuing to repose the confidence in your Team Unity administration. It has never been better in this country, Mr. Speaker, never. And like the songwriter says, things are getting better. Mr. Speaker, may it please you, sir. I thank you. Yeah.